Hey what's up guys and welcome back to the channel in another video. In this video we'll start the build on this early 90s Group C legend, the Calsonic Nissan R92CP. So let's get to it. Overall I was pretty excited to start the build. This is my first Asegawa kit so I wasn't really sure what to expect from it. My only initial disappointment was when I found out that the car didn't actually come with an engine. It's only the gearbox that you get in the, in the kit and after later investigation I found that they actually make a super detailed kit. Nevertheless, still very excited to have a look at the quality of the parts and get the overall build started. After having looked at all the sprues, I was pretty happy to see the, the mold quality. Um, there weren't a lot of mold lines, so it was the, the casting was was really good. I was really happy to see that, and a lot of parts as well, which is always a bonus. As usual, we're starting off the build by taking them off the sprues, cleaning them up. Um, I did find the plastic on this uh, a little bit different to, I think I just got used to all the Tamiya kits that I've recently built. The Tamiya plastic seems to be a bit softer um, while cutting through it and because this is a harder type plastic, you just need to be careful when taking the sprues off and cleaning off the the extra plastic of the sides of the, uh, the body panels. Just be careful with taking it off, but otherwise overall very good quality. Next up, I just used Tamiya's plastic scriber to clean up some of those body panels. Then Tamiya's sanding sponge. I used a thousand grit on this one. It was enough to clean up any mold lines that were on the body. Next up, I used Tamiya's extra thin cement to attach some of the smaller parts to the body panels ready for primer. For priming the body, I used Tamiya's white fine surface primer. I gave it two coats, uh, not too thick, uh, but just enough with good coverage. Next up for the base coat, I used Tamiya's X2 white. In hindsight, I probably should have used a different color primer because it was quite difficult to see the coverage. I left the paint to dry for about 24 hours then I masked up the body for the second of the three base colors. For the second base color on the center cowl and the rear cowl, it's red, so I used Mr. Hobby's Aqueous H3 red. My initial coat around the masking was pretty thin. I waited for that to dry before I added the second and the third coat. Didn't want to leave the masking tape too long on the paint, so I waited for about an hour, then I peeled it off very carefully, pulling the masking tape away from the seam line as I was peeling it off. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the result so far. Then finally, having waited for another 24 hours for the red paint to cure, 
I masked up the body ready for the blue paint. For the blue paint I used Mr. Hobby's H5. Then finally after three days of painting, I unmasked the body for the last time. Unfortunately, as you can see, some of the blue paint did get onto the white. I managed to save it by using some 7000 grit sandpaper and water and lightly sanding it down. I have found applying a clear coat to the body before applying decals makes the decals much easier to manage and position, so I applied a single coat of Mr. Hobby's 30 YL. I started by cutting out the decals from the decal sheet and adding it to some lukewarm water, only for about 10 seconds or so and then took it out. For applying the decals, I used a combination of Microset and Microsol. Surprisingly, I did find the decals from this kit much easier to manage and handle compared to some of the previous Tamiya kits that I've built. Then after the decals were applied, I gave the body three coats of Zero Paints 2K Clear. The first two coats were mist coats, about 10 minutes apart. Then after that I gave it a wet coat and then left it for about three days to cure. After the clear coat had dried, I did notice that I did get some orange peel, so I had to sand that back. I started by sanding it down with 2000 grit and working my way up all the way to 7000. Once I was happy with the smooth surface, I used UMP's ultimate polish system to polish down the body. During the sanding process, I managed to go through the clear and the paint on some of the edges. I was just going to paint that in, it didn't bother me too much, as I didn't think it would be very visible. Next up with the wheels, I started by painting the center rim with Mr. Hobby's H18 steel. I covered up the center part of the rim with Vallejo's liquid mask, now we're ready for more paint. 
Now that the liquid mask is cured into like a green jelly, we're ready for more paint. The outside of the room is painted in Mr. Hobby H8 Silver. You have to be careful when removing the liquid mask, as you can easily damage the paint underneath. Now I wanted to try something new. I saw another YouTuber paint their wheels. So I painted my wheels with Tamiya's X, uh, XF85 rubber black and was fairly happy with the result. Moving on to the second last step on the wheels, I added some of the decals, again using the Microset and Microsol solutions. And finally for the last step, and also a first for the channel, I covered both the tyre and the rim with a flat clear, and was very happy with the overall result. Now it's time to finally assemble all the body parts. We're starting on the front cowl. I started by painting the headline holders in XF1 flat black. Then we used some BSI InstaCure to glue in the air intakes. Then I sprayed the headlights with Tamiya's XF1 flat black and I painted the center parts of the lights with Mr. Hobby's H8 silver. For applying all the clear parts, I used BSI's InstaCure Plus. For the center cowl assembly, there were a few parts that I had to paint silver and I also had to fix the edges of the bonnet panel which came off while sanding for polishing. The dashboard and roll cage both fit into the center cowl before putting it onto the main chassis. So I painted up the dashboard in XF1 black. And then for the buttons, I first painted everything in silver, then added some color to those buttons with various clear paints from Tamiya. After having assembled the dash, I installed it into position. Then to finish off the center cowl, I added the windshield decal. On the rear cowl, unfortunately, it was more of the same. So I painted in the edges that I sanded off.
Then using BSI's Instacure Plus, I installed the aerodynamic elements to the rear cowl. And to finish it off, I added the air intake on the rear cowl and called it good. And that's it for this one guys, thanks a lot for watching. If you like this video, like the content, please subscribe and hit that like button and I'll see you on the next one. Keep modeling.